Hi Planet Protectors, it's Dylan and welcome to our first ever Planet Protector environmental story time. I am so excited to have you with me and for our first book I want you to do something kind of special. So I thought I would read this very true and inspiring story called Ducks Overboard. So are you with me? Let's do it. So as I was saying, this book is called Ducks Overboard and it's a true story about these rubber ducks that fell off of a boat and where they ended up in the ocean. And it's written by Marcus Modem, who's a really awesome author. Um, and we got this book from our library, so maybe yours has it too if you wanna check it out. Alrighty. So, let's start. And it's basically, if 28,000 plastic um, ducks spilled into the Pacific Ocean, what would happen to them and where would they go? Alrighty. Hello. You may have seen ducks like me before, but I'll bet none of them has a story like mine. I've been on quite an adventure. This is the story of that incredible journey. Where I come from, how I got lost, the strange and amazing sights that I saw, and how I ended up here. Where is here? Well, first things first. My story began in 1992 in a factory in China. The factory molded plastic bath toys in shapes of ducks, frogs, turtles, and beavers. Many toys are made from plastic because it's long lasting and easy to clean. Thousands of us ducks were packed up in boxes. Plastic can be extremely useful material and is used widely in medicine, technology, and food storage. Our boxes were loaded into a container and carried away by a large truck. More plastic has been produced since 2004 than during the whole of the 20th century. It's a lot of plastic. Our container, along with hundreds of others, was loaded onto a ship destined for the United States, about 6,000 miles or 9,600 kilometers across the Pacific Ocean. From there, we would land in all sorts of shops and bathtubs. At least that was the plan. Far out at sea, the ship was caught in a fierce storm. A giant wave swept our container overboard and it began to sink. In its fall from the ship, the container had been damaged. Through the cracks and holes, my friends and I escaped and bobbed to the surface. The ship continued its journey to the United States, leaving 28,000 plastic ducks stranded in the middle of the ocean. Hundreds of shipping containers are lost overboard every year. Cargo floating on the sea or washed up on shore is known as flotsam. Most flotsam is never recovered. We were buffeted by the waves, blown by the wind, and pulled by the ocean currents. We were soon separated and spread out in different directions. We were surrounded by the blue sea and the life in it. A current is a steady movement of water in a particular direction. Ocean currents are driven by tides, wind, and water temperatures and, des and density. We saw fish of every size, shape, and color. We saw a giant jellyfish and many other creatures. And we spotted something completely out of place in the ocean plastic bag. Plastic bags are single-use plastic, which means they are used for every short time, uh, for a very short time before being thrown away. Before we knew it, a passing whale gobbled it up. The giant creature had mistaken the bag for food. It swam off, still hungry, to catch up with its pod. We carried on with our journey. If eaten, plastic bags can cause and bind the di digestive systems of sea creatures. The days passed and I found myself alone, pulled by a current away from the last of my fellow travelers. One day, I spotted a sea turtle struggling in the water. Sea creatures can get entangled in fishing nets. The nets can make it more difficult for animals to swim, hunt for food, or even breathe. The ocean currents carried me and my friends far and wide. Some journeys lasted years. Some ducks made their way to Japan. On average, 27 times more plastic winds up in the waters around Japan than anywhere else in the globe. Some ducks reached Hawaii. The location of these islands in the Pacific Ocean currents means that a lot more plastic washes up there. 
Some ducks reach to Australia. Coral reefs around the Australian coast can be poisoned by the plastic that gets caught in them. And finally, some ducks got stuck in Arctic ice. When the ice melted, those ducks floated south to Scotland and to the east coast of the United States. I wasn't so lucky. The currents took me straight into a giant garbage patch. For miles, all I could see was trash, toothbrushes, bottles, cups, shoes, and more. I was caught in a swirling, floating mass of trash. Was this where I belonged? The giant Pacific garbage patch is a vast area with a high concentration of marine trash. It's created by swirling currents that carry debris to the area and trap it. It's estimated to be more than double the size of Texas. I thought I'd be stuck there forever, part of an island of unwanted, discarded, and forgotten things. Then one day, the clouds darkened the sky. The wind picked up. The water grew wild. A mighty storm freed me from the garbage patch. Across weeks, months, and years, the ocean tossed me. I floated for thousands of miles until one day I finally reached land. Though I had never seen or been to this place before, it felt familiar. Why? The beach was covered in trash, the same kind of trash I'd seen in the oceans all over the world. Plastic, it seemed, was everywhere. At least here, the trash was not being ignored. Up and down the beach, it was being collected, then sorted. Some of it would be recycled, while some of it would be cleaned, fixed, or restored to be made useful again. Even I was scooped up and put in a bag. Where would I end up? I wondered. And it was here. Alrighty, guys. And that's it for our story. At the back of the book, you can see there's a lot more information on ocean currents, plastic facts, or how you can help. This is a really incredible book, um, and I encourage you guys to read it and look in your library to find it. Um, Marcus Modem is the illustrator, like I said before, and he's also, or sorry, he's the author, and he's also the illustrator, so it's pretty cool that he could do both the writing and the pictures. Um, What's great in particular about this book is it creates, it tells a story, but it also um, gives information about the plastic crisis that we have today and how it's important that we be really careful where our trash goes and we make sure that we don't litter it. It goes in the trash can or it goes in recycling or we can reuse it again. It's also important that if you see trash while you're hiking on the beach or you're swimming in the ocean, that you pick it up so that no other animal um, like a turtle, a whale, or a dolphin ends up eating it. Um, just make sure that you have the right gear to protect your hands, like hand sanitizer or gloves, or can wash your hands right after. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to catch you in the next story time. Let us know in the comments below what other environmental stories you want to see. Okay, bye guys! A huge thank you to Marcus Modem for writing and illustrating this inspiring and true story about a rubber duck and its journey to the bathtub. Make sure to check out his other awesome books, 